Lester has stopped it. Wow, that is going to be controversial. That's a crunching right hand, and that must finish it. It must finish it. Taylor trying to catch himself, using his jab. He's a right hand. Another right hand, and he goes down. Oh, my goodness. The dream is made real. Ricky Hart rocks the world with a truly stunning win over a modern legend. He is the champion of the world. Yes, 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 people, back again. Raps on TV in the place to be. Reporting live out of London. Had to end the music swiftly like that. Um, but me, it's me, your host, Kojo. Um, back to talk all the best things in boxing. Got a packed agenda this week. Um, but as per usual, I'm joined with my co-host, Tom and Rafi. What's going on, guys? All What's good, man? Good, good, good. Very uh, nice. Uh, nothing more? Do you want to elaborate? Nah, we're Enjoy all... the boxing? All right, yeah, yeah. Very good. A great evening in boxing. Obviously, the main event. No, I don't think many people saw that coming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we def- we 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 definitely definitely did not, and we didn't get that in our predictions. Um, but no, looking forward to this week's show. Um, looking to tackling into quite a few. Uh, the agenda is quite packed. We're going to tackle a Lee Selby interview in about half an hour, so he'll be calling in. Uh, so get your questions ready. Uh, we'll be looking to speak to him about his performance over the weekend. Also going to touch about the main event, um, which is DeGale versus Eubank Jr., which was really a bad loss when you look back at it. Um, so really going to dissect that win uh, for Eubank and what it means for him moving forward. And obviously DeGale. Uh, also going to talk about the AJ Miller press conference, which concluded yesterday uh, over in London. So we had Big Babe Miller up in London walking his big streets with his cheeseburger feet. Um, but that was good to see uh, his response there. And also we've got Joyce versus Stefan, which was a fight on the undercard. Uh, we're going to break that down. Uh, also get, get into Lee Selby's performance. Obviously, Anthony Durrell won the WBC, WBC super middleweight belt. So he's now a champion and we're going to see what that would mean for the future. And this weekend's fight is obviously the Peterborough card, which is a matchroom stacked card with some of their next-gen prospects. Um, and also we're going to talk into the Lara and the return of Luis Ortiz. But guys, no better place to start really than DeGale versus Eubank. Eubank. We all picked DeGale to win. I think the logic probably was what was driving us. I know certainly for me, um, but the variables that we kind of spoke about were kind of really on show. Uh, Nate Vasquez came in and done a really great job. Um, I mean, overall, what, and I want to ask you both individually, what were you both impressed? What impressed you the most on the night um, between Eubank and DeGale? Uh, yes, yeah, so I mean, you touched on it there, um, implementing um, and incorporating uh, Nate Vasquez in in the camp definitely aided Eubank in the fight. Um, I do think he did make the adjustments uh, necessary um, to force the pressure. Um, you know, he's always been a relentless pressure fighter anyway, mm-hmm. but against Degel, who's was synonymous for uh, boxing on the back foot, um, he managed to get up on his chest early on. Um, his output of punches was very impressive. And I think he he did break, he did break the girl's heart, mm-hmm. um, knocked him down multiple times. And I just think the way he was patient with his shots, um, how he you know he set into range, and then he he threw the the combinations definitely gave him the success during the fight. Yeah, Roughly. yeah. And just further to what Tom said, I think he showed a lot of maturity as well. Mm. I think Chris Eubank of even as far as six months ago before yeah. Nate Vasquez, when he hurt the girl in the second, mm. he'd have gone for it all out. Yeah. But he showed a lot of maturity in that fight and you're probably inclined to think he'll continue working with Nate Vasquez. Yep. So a uh, very good performance from Eubank. And it was applied pressure. Yeah. It was quite methodical in that sense, whereas we're quite used to seeing an onslaught after onslaught of barrage and barrage of punches. Yes, and it was so quite methodical output. and tactical. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, I think you both kind of said something which is really important. Um, one is the maturity. I think Eubank showed great maturity to not lunge in um, when he had him hurt um, and just kind of go reckless with his punches. He was very sort of calculated took his time, even when, if you look at one of the tactics the girl was employing, was to throw the jab or throw a single shot. It was catching you back quite early, but yeah. later on, you know, Vasco said to him, listen, when you see him throwing it, just step back or lean to the side. He began to do that and was able to counter effectively. So I thought that was impressive. And then from you, you spoke about Tommy, when you spoke about breaking him mentally, I actually think you're right. That's the first knockdown in the second round. I think that the girl, I don't want to say gave up, but I think from then onwards, he knew it was a massive uphill task because he really just didn't do anything to come back effectively. Yeah. Were you surprised to see DeGale lunging in as much as he did? Because that wasn't something that we'd seen for a very long time. Yeah, I was. And at the first two or three rounds, I couldn't make out whether it was a positive or negative, if I'm being honest. I was looking at it, I was thinking, well, he's landing with the odd shot, but he's going straight in for the clinch. So, yeah. And I think what what was important with that fight as well, Eubank managed to listen to the instructions from the corner. Yeah. You know, beforehand, he was very... um, 
sort of dismissive of the corner's instructions, particularly yeah. going into those championship rounds where you need your corner to exactly. give you those vital instructions, get back to the corner, regroup, yeah. uh, stick to the game plan. He he stuck to, fair play to him, he stuck to the game plan yeah. throughout the 12 rounds. Yeah. And I think as well, what a lot of people criticised him for before was his footwork. Yeah. And I think in this fight, he managed to take those pigeon steps, yes. set him into range and then throw the, yeah. the combinations. And, think, it, yeah. and it off-guarded the girl. Yeah, that's actually a good point because he wasn't, you know, there wasn't a big gap in between his feet. It was big steps, even though it looked a bit awkward at times. Because I was watching, I was thinking, yeah, you could see, you know, the Billy Joe Saunders of these worlds, uh, Callum Smith, will probably still beat him. Um, but for a, the a name of the girl, he was he was using what he's learned, and you could see it um, on show. Um, it's just yeah, teething problems. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and I think the longer I say the longer, but the more he can kind of fight in the, in the, under Vasquez's tutelage, I think that's going to be impressive. One of the key things for me I would just say was the calmness of Vasquez in the corner if you compare the two sides you could see that Jim McDonald who's a great trainer he was quite erratic you know when there was blood and it was all about you know it was just quite uh, just... you're going to cry in your room tomorrow right <laughs> <laughs> it's all a bit of a mess but um with Vasquez it was very calm like clear in-fight instruction so he's reacting to what he's seeing and then giving him an approach say listen this is what you should do when you see him doing this and I, I really like that and I think you could it was it was a breath of fresh air because Eubank has a perception and and this sort of reputation of being very arrogant, doesn't want to take instruction, doesn't listen to anyone. But actually, on Saturday night, you saw he can follow a plan out to a T. So yeah, um, I think you touched on there as well. I mean, it, it seemed quite similar to the way the Saunders Lemieux fight happened yeah. with the the corner, the very animated, mm -hmm. the girl got back. He never really seemed in control of the fight from a mental standpoint. I just wanted to kind of get your thoughts um, on kind of stepping up to the elite level. Um, do you think Eubank still is re requires to make those adjustments when he does come up against the the top in the you know of the division? You're probably inclined to think there's still a bit of a long way to go, but you know hindsight's a wonderful thing. If he'd had Nate Vasquez back in 2014 when he fought Saunders, yeah. this may be a completely different conversation. Yeah, or so, or, any, or any other right? Or any other. As, you're yeah. right, saying Vasquez has come in and done a great job, and he's done it quite quietly. There wasn't as much noise about him as they say the Malignaggi you know, impacting yeah. that camp. But yeah, it could have been any other coach with a good reputation and understands the game of boxing. Who knows? So I think Eubank, will he? And obviously we hope we get that interview next week. He pulled out of the interview for today, but that'll be a question I'd like to ask him is, does he, looking back on that, does he regret maybe not working with somebody earlier? I'm sure he would say no. Um, but, you know, you're going to look at your career and I guess there's great opportunities in front of him, but you would say to yourself, you know, the Groves fight, even a Joe Saunders with a right coach, I'm not saying he would have won, but he might have got a lot more respect out of it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so for me, I think it was a really good fight, really entertaining. Um, what do you guys make of the uh, the good old UFC body slam from Eubank? That would have been a night for 10th um, round. Man, that was a spine buster. That was <laughs> WWE. Oh, 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 yeah. That was painful. It looked painful. <laughs> I mean, the uh, what's the Batista would have been happy with that one. Oh, yeah, time. Yeah. It was the angle made it look worse than it was as well. Yeah, Did you see the side angle? It yes. didn't look that bad, but yeah, full seen, on. Yeah, the icon we use for our thumbnail is the side picture angle. Yeah. And like the girl's legs are just up in the air and you just see you back looking down and you're like, ooh, like that slap on the ring. Yeah. It's... Very, very painful. So, um, so yeah, so for me, I thought it was a good, good fight. Um, I think, you know, uh, before we quickly go, go on to uh, the girl, just talking about Eubank, obviously senior in the post-conference, uh, post-fight conference said that, um, well, he said two things. One, they're signed with PBC. I want to kind of get your guys' thoughts on this three-fight deal with PBC. Can it be positive? Can it be negative? Yeah. And also senior mentioned uh, going down uh, to the middleweight and potentially fighting there. What What's your thoughts on that, guys? Um, you can pick one question each, so totally up to you. I think the only incentive to go back down to middleweight is to either look at someone like a Canelo or a Golovkin. Mm. Um, I don't see what else there is to do in that division. Um, as far as big money fights generated goes, you're probably inclined to think someone like a Callum Smith or a Billy Joe Saunders at super middleweight would probably generate more than a domestic fight lower down. But, I mean, what are your thoughts, Tom? Yeah, no, I think um, I'd be inclined to see the, uh, the Saunders fight again. Mm. Um, I think... Eubank will take a lot of confidence from the fact that Saunders has been played by inactivity. He's obviously had the the controversy behind the uh, the drugs um, situation, and I think now as well the fact that he's stepping back up, he's been presented with a, an opportunity um, at one six eight to fight for a vacant belt. Eubank's probably thinking, "Well, I've beat a credible name in Degel, and mm -hmm. he's ha he's got that on his record now, and people are starting to talk uh, about him a lot more." And I think it's a massive profile boost for. 
Eubank to be on the PBC platform. He can he can now kind of hold his hands up and say that he is the flag bearer for ITV box office. Mm. Um, and these domestic fights can be can you know be a lot more feasible now that he's he's on a, a major platform. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of fights going on, going, Rafi. I was going to say, I think it works both ways and as well in the sense that ITV haven't had a flagship fight and they're probably relying on Eubank to get yeah. the job done. Yeah, and for me, I think just to talk about that PBC deal, I think that's the key thing in terms of ITV, what they're trying to build as a brand in boxing. I think I did say a couple of weeks before was Eubank, it was better for Eubank to win the fight because it means you've got a bit of longevity with him than against the girl. Um, I think working with PBC, I think they're definitely going to get him in with Durrell who won the WBC belt on the Saturday night. I think they're going to try and get that fight as quickly as possible. And you really want that fight over in the UK because you can do a big arena for it. Eubank is, is I'm going to say a household name purely because of his father, but actually he does transcend. You see the crowd were behind him. So I think he's got a big fan support as well. Um, our numbers, whenever he's on a show or, or you see IFL or Behind the Gloves, you see he does numbers. So I think for PBC, their key thing now is to match him with somebody like Darrell getting him out there as quickly as possible um, and really building their brand, which I think they can do. Um, I do think middleweight is probably the better option for him. Um, and that's not even a Canelo or a Charlo. I think it's some of the other players out there that are dangerous fights and would be big fights, big, big sellers in the UK. Um, even an Andrade, um, I don't think that's a dangerous fight for you, Bank. Yeah. I think Saunders probably is because um, Saunders will be up for it. Um, and probably just has got the better beating of him. But you look in the division, I mean, there could be a Charlo, you know, there's a lot of names. Um, I'm not saying Eubank can beat them, but he could probably have go up go up and make, make a fight. So And even yeah. the Lemieux fights are, is a great is a great matchup. I mean even to exactly. kind of break into the uh, the elite level, um, that's a it's a massive name to have in your record. Obviously Lemieux's got a high ranking with the WBO. Um, and I think stylistically, the Andrade fight would be a very good fight for Eubank. I think if he can get up on the inside, um, apply pressure, as Rafi touched on earlier, um, he can certainly cause Andrade uh, problems. And I don't think there's certain fighters in the middleweight division where they've got a bit of range, they've got they they're able to use their 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 reach. But I think once you're in there with someone who's on your chest early on um, and forcing the forcing the fight, then it becomes a lot more problematic, yeah. especially late on. Yeah, and it did prove to be for James DeGale. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, and I guess, um, you know, you're looking at that fight. Um, I mean, one thing that also impressed me was Eubanks, I'll say accuracy. of clear. I think he doesn't have the power at Superman because he, some of the other guys I would have seen, they would have knocked DeGale out with some of the clear shots they were getting. Um, and DeGale was clear on the back foot from like round eight onwards. Um, but I think for me, um, Eubank, it would be good to see him just drop down, like I said, drop down the division um, and then just start really calling some guys out. Maybe if he takes this WBC, go back down to middleweight and then just say, you know what, who wants to be a fighter? I can bring a big name. Let's get a big name. But I think it was impressive to see like the way he was throwing his shots, the accuracy of his shots. Um, and he's really shown that he's grown in his last year, year six months to a year. Yeah, after. Do you think there might be a bit of a reluctance to do that in the sense that it was a new start against, it's a new win with a new trainer at a new weight? maybe reverting to type may not be in his best interest psychologically mm. what do you guys think of that yeah no i think it's a, it's a it's a good it's a good point i think as well you kind of look at the the middleweight landscape and you think well i think eubanks probably jumped up to 168 knowing that the rest of the middleweights out there tied up with the zone the other platforms and i think psychologically mm -hmm. eubank probably knows he's not you know a fully fledged um super middleweight but he can have success against guys that potentially are on the decline or have kind of had have have had tough fights whereas Eubank's been looked fresh like fight by fight he's not really had that that fight uh, the fights that will kind of take a lot out of you in the, and that longevity um the likes of Abraham um even like Nick Blackwell and those those kind of fights so i mean in terms of his progress from domestic level to world level he's he's been match made very well he's had those fights where you know, you're you're constantly progressing. You've got guys that have been around, been around the block. They've fought for world titles. They've got that credibility. And now he's taken over. He can start mapping out the the, the meaningful fights at either 160 or 168. Yeah. Yeah. And guys, just going on to the girl. Um, I'm gonna be honest. Um, I was a bit concerned for him when the cards was being re read out, and he had his hand up the whole time That's like crazy. each card and even that he was reading it and i mean so he was hearing them and he was hearing the points distance and he was like still had his hand in the end he was like but what what and i was thinking are you mad like sure, even as we all know fighters know when they've won a fight and when they've lost a fight yeah i can't see what he would have 
seen in himself to make him think he won that fight. Uh, and like... do you think it's the impact of the medical? Because I, I'll be honest, when I hear him speak, and George Groves has got a little bit of this. I think if they've had, there's, there's a length of time that they need to actually, they, they haven't recovered quickly enough from some of the serious fights they've been in. And when I look at James Gill, I'm thinking, like, his health is starting to be affected here. You know, God willing and touch with nothing bad happens. But his slurred speech, he's, what, yeah. he's just so incoherent. You're listening to him, you're like, mate, he didn't even ask you that question. What the hell are you talking about? He can't walk straight. I mean, what did yeah. you guys make of that? I mean, it's, it's sad to see, really, even since the uh, the Badu Jack fight, it just seems that he hasn't really got any notion to, mm. to what's going on, really. Because, I mean... I, I can't see how he can possibly think he won that fight. I think, it, again, it brings it back to the fact that Eubank broke his heart early on. Yeah. And, and like, I think just it would have been better if he had come out and just accepted that he, he lost the fight. Mm. Eubank was the better fighter, landed the more shots, had a better output, exactly. have, you know, was more aggressive. And the, the, the problem with James DeGale is that he, he works 30 seconds of every round, banking mm. on that to get him through the fight mm. for the 12-round distance. Yeah. And you, you can't afford that at yeah. the elite level. You've got to work for it two and a half minutes to three minutes of every round. Yep. You know, sh- give the judges something to say, yeah, you've won that round. You, yep. Even if you've nicked it, if it's a close round. Yep. But he just doesn't, do- his work rate's not good enough yeah. at the elite level yeah. and has proven since the Badu Jack fight. Yeah. I think in his defence though, there was some common ground with the judges in the sense that some of those scorecards were quite close mm. to the surprise of the three of us, I'm sure many yeah. of our listeners tonight. Yeah. But, um, Especially made, one that had 14, 114, 112, and that was with two knockdowns. That was with two knockdowns. So without those, I mean, that would have been a draw? More or less a draw, yeah. yeah. Draw, pretty yeah. much. And because obviously yeah. Eubank had a point deducted for the yeah. UFC. The, uh, yeah, <laughs> the WWE. Yeah. But you know what? I still scored I scored three of those rounds, 10-8, and I mm. very rarely give a 10-8 unless there's a knockdown. Yes. But you know, it wasn't scored a knockdown, but he was on the ropes. Yeah, he was. I, I, I gave that 10-8 round. Yeah. Did you guys give it 10-9? Yeah, nine, espe- especially when it's a dominant round. You have, yeah. you, know, you know, there's a lot do, of legitimacy. Yeah. I mean, the so. second round especially, right? Because he f- clearly fell down. He like, went back onto the ropes. That saved him. Yeah. Um, and you're right, he was using the ropes to kind of survive. Um, yeah, I gave a lot of the. I didn't give that many ten eight outside of the knockdowns. Um, I think I had it because at some point I stopped. I had it at least four clear for Eubank um, because for me, what Eubank was doing, which was impressive, was the last thirty seconds. Actually, his activity went up, and you could hear Vasco saying thirty seconds, and then he was pressurizing him, and he was throwing shots at him. He was landing. I think even in one, forget what round it was. Again, maybe it was nine ten. He literally landed about five, six punches on the girl, and the girl was moving back at the same time, and Eubank was lunging forward, but it was catching him, catching him, catching him. It so was efficiency, wasn't it? That's very the most efficient way. Honestly, it's probably the most efficient he's been. I mean, that's I'm pretty certain he's living it up for these next few days, just <laughs> off the off the limelight of that. Um, and there was a few rounds that were a bit untidy, and mm, it was probably oh, quite difficult to score. But yeah. I think. Similar to the the Truex fight where he was on top of De Gale, De Gale was forced back onto the ropes. I just think in terms of aggression, Eubank's probably a few levels uh, ahead of Truex in that kind of sense. So yes. I mean, probably a lot easier for the judges to see that he was forcing the pace of the fight and, um, as you said, Rafi, efficient with his shots and landing on the target. Yeah. Um, guys, listen, we're going to go out to the phone lines, um, get some feedback from... Uh, the public, as they say, fans talking boxing. So going out to 985, 985. Mr. Appiah. Uh, Mr. Appiah, question or statement? Hello? Oh, he's disappeared. 985, Mr. Appiah. All right, moving on. 478. Moving on to 478. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, can hear you now. Hello? Hi, hello, hi guys. Keep up the good work. Um, Appreciate Jeff, that. Jeff, I got a question for you. Okay, um, yeah. A couple of questions. Um, the first one is: um, Do you think that it was um, Eubanks' improvement from last time out, or the fact that the Gale is looking like a shot fighter, or just a bit of both? And also, do you think that? The Gale managed to hit his ceiling in his career, or he would have benefited from tra- changing coach um, a few you know years back. Yeah. Um, because I'm, I don't know, like myself, but I don't really rate his uh, his his trainer. But that's just my point of view. But yeah, that's my question, guys. Yeah, yeah. I think it's an interesting point you raise, um, especially the second half of your question were about um, you know hi- with hindsight, it's a wonderful thing in the sense that. Um, mm-hmm. With a trainer, if you'd fast, if you'd rewound the clock four years ago, it'd have been different, possibly. But um, 
for myself personally, I think it was a mix of the two, but I think you do have to give Eubank credit because at the end of the day, James DeGale is James DeGale. Has he seen better days? Yes. But at the end of the day, I think there was a lot of maturity that he showed there, which he hadn't done previously. And that was testament to his coach for myself mm-hmm. personally. Yeah, and I think just to kind of add on to that, um, I mean, the first part of your question, I, I do I do think it was an element of both. I think Eubank was very good at listening to the instructions when it was most crucial, especially those kind of mid to uh, championship rounds. And I think in terms of since the Badu Jack fight, um, I think DeGale's kind of, like I said a bit earlier about his work rate, he's he, he's starting to bank a lot more on just kind of working for the first uh, 30 seconds of each round to kind of capture the, uh, the judges' mm-hmm. attention. So, I mean, I think... You ha- you can't take anything away from Eubank. I think um, he stuck mm. to the game plan well, and it was and like we said, was efficient with uh, his shots early on. Scored the knockdowns, and I think just grew from strength to strength and built more confidence in the fight. Yeah, and if I could just uh, right, so. if I could just add, no, I do think again it is a bit of both. Again, just my opinion. Um, I think you know Styles made fights, and I do think it was the style that Eubank brought at this specific time of the girl's career. That probably helped him massively with the win. Um, I think there were key things from Vasquez that helped. Um, But for me, I would say, um, you know, Eubank, at the end of the day, he had more energy. He was more efficient in the shots. And one of the things about the girl, I've always, you know, I respect him. I think he's done well, Olympian, world champion. But if you think of most of his fights, probably Darrell, and even then that was close. He always gives up the second half of the fight. So he's like, he's only really a six, seven round fighter, which can be enough. But he's never... Mm-hmm. 100, I've, I, I, I struggle to think, think about a fight where he's been dominant and last week that came to my mind but I just thought, you know, he's got the pedigree, he's got the experience, Eubank hadn't um, and I thought the girl would get the yeah. win but yeah, Eubank, I think he impressed me um, and I think it's a mixture of the girl on the slide and Eubank being reinv- reinvigorated with a new coach. And just flipping the question back on yourself, do you think it was more a case of Eubank on the rise or DeGale on the decline? Um, I think I think it was maybe a, a kind of a perfect storm. He kind of met um, De Gale at the perfect time, where he was slightly on the slide. But then Eubanks made some crucial changes, like having a coach that he's going to listen to, someone to teach him about yeah. his footwork and and sort of tighten up some of those fundamentals because he seemed to go in there previously to just go in like a whirlwind, even though he was starting slightly slow. But it was all about work rate and throwing yes, rather than yes. you know using a bit of his technique and setting things up and using some good footwork to get in yeah. and you know and set up the attacks. And I think that that was massive for for the fight that happened at the weekend. And I just think he'll lo- hopefully will learn more because this is the Lou Bank that I thought we would have seen, um, yeah, you know. Yeah. And I think maybe he's shown up to the party slightly late, but he's a young man. He's not got a lot of uh, miles on the clock. Um, you know, he might be the same age or around the same age as Groves, but he's got a lot less, um, you know, wear and tear in the tank. And I mean, he can start his career now, Perfect, properly. Yeah. Yeah, some um, great points. Yeah. Perfect. No, thank you very much, yeah. Jeff, for calling in and support. All right, um, thanks, guys. Cheers. Appreciate the thanks support. Thanks for the support, support Cheers, Cheers, Jeff. Cheers, thanks. Take care, boys. Cheers. Go- All right. Cheers. Going out to 350. Uh, 350. Hello. Hey, guys. Hello. It's Melissa from Mel PR. Hi, yes, Melissa. Melissa. How are you doing? Melissa. How are you guys doing? Doing very okay. well. Shout and- out to Team Dogbo. Yeah, and the rest. <laughs> and the rest. <laughs> and, she's she's, and she's the building rest a big client, clientele now, big, big client base. Come on. <laughs> Lomachenko, <laughs> Crawford, Khan, come on, very privileged to be working with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys sounded really shocked that you just heard me. <laughs> nah, it's good to have you on the uh, phone into the studio support exactly. as always. So. Exactly. What's, what, question or statement, yeah. Melissa? It's going to be a question. So, do you feel that the James DeGale, Chris Eubanks show was pay-per-view worthy, as in the build-up and everything else that was going on? Do you feel like, you know, as a spectator or anyone else listening, do you feel like you got that result in the end? Do you know what? I think this is, this is a great question because, yeah. I mean, when you look at the main event alone, you see the pedigree uh, DeGale's got, obviously, two-time world champion, Olympic gold medalist has kind of had the fights um, in the States with Darrell. You see Eubank is a household name in the UK. So, I mean, alone, a lot of people would have probably criticised um, that being um, sort of, if it hadn't been accompanied by a strong undercard, was it worthy of a pay-per-view? Probably not. But I think because it was backed by um, Pox and Sports, you know, they're kind of 
uh, building mm. um, a bit of a reputation in the boxing game and also ITV Box Office now as a, a groundbreaking, uh, groundbreaking platform both in the US and the UK. I think it kind of added to the strength yeah. of the card. Um, Joyce Laverne was a, an, another a good fight as long as it lasted. But then also, you know, you have the lights on the undercard, Chris <laughs> yeah. Congo, Joe Joyce. So no, in 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 all, I think it was uh, pay per view worthy, and I think the main event lived up to expectation. Yeah, it's an yeah. interesting. I mean, it's such a shame not to have Chris Congo on, on the show in the end, but these things happen, obviously, in boxing. But yeah, it was it was definitely a great show. They, I think they made a great effort. Yeah, yeah. it's like with the, with what we do, this is what we're you know. I'm always interested in is. Are we getting the? Are we getting it right with the pay per view? Because obviously, as you know, I'm doing pay per view, <laughs> Khan and Crawford, April twentieth. So it's like you know, you have to take these experiences and learn from them. So. Most yeah, definitely, course. and that's I mean, Crawford Khan's hundred percent pay per view worthy. I would say, do you know what? It, it, if this was Sky, and I know it sounds really weird saying it, but if it was Sky, I'd probably say maybe this isn't pay per view worthy. But I think, as a boxing fan, understanding that ITV are just making their foray, maybe I just give them that. Not benefit of that, but I give them an allowance to say, you know what, this is one of your early pay per view cards. It's a, t- mm, it, it, sh- it should have been a tenner. I think it was about twelve ninety nine in the end. But yeah, for tenner, I would definitely yeah. say it's worth it. Um, but yeah, no, I think for me, it's it probably wasn't the greatest um, overall pay per view card, but um, it was good. It was decent. I think there were good names. Yeah, uh, yeah Selby as well. Um, even the Sterling mm. uh, against Rick Summers was a good fight. So yeah, it's just a shame about Chris Congo because he's a guy I've got. I believe is is an immense talent, and he just needs to get an an opponent brave enough to fight him, and he can display that to sort of like the whole of the UK. Yeah, and yeah, no, I was I was so disappointed. I was so looking forward to seeing him. He's such a great fighter. Yeah, and and Melissa, um, in, in terms of you, do you want to just let us know what what you're keeping up with outside of Crawford Khan? Let our listeners know where to look out, for, where to find you. No, we're all geared up. We're just starting the campaign for Crawford Khan. That that's what we're concentrating on. We've got a, a great event coming up with Mark Prince, which we'll be announcing shortly. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, everything's being all all the gears full on to April twentieth. Perfect. And um, with the event with Mark Prince, please call in again and let us know. We'll be happy to help promote that and get as many people down there as possible. Most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, Cheers. no, definitely. Because obviously he. Been doing. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. All right, Melissa, we're going to move on to the next caller, but thank you very much no for calling problem. in. Appreciate Thanks, the support. Melissa, for support Bye. In. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Going Bye-bye. out to 985, Mr. Appiah, hopefully we can. that works again. Hello. Hello, fellas. How are we doing? Not too bad, not too bad. Yes, Yourself, Daniel, mate? how you doing? Yeah, how you doing, boys? Yeah, all good. All good. good. All good. What did you make of the question all or good. statement? Uh, yeah, um, statement, um, yeah, good performance by Chris Eubank, as the caller before said, that's the Eubank we thought we was going to see, mm. um, the girl shot, he's shot now, he's finished, and, uh, you know, there's been little rumours around about his lifestyle, mm. you know, um, getting on the piss and all that, and that's probably caught up with him as well, do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And, yeah. uh. As you as you said before, he's got stamina issues. And, uh, he just got out half food and just uh, he got beat up and battered badly on Saturday night. Yeah. Badly. And Daniel, um, geez, were you su- sorry? Smash. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, go and were on. you um, were you surprised by the the adjustments that Eubank was able to make? Obviously, we all know him for his his um, applied pressure. Um, you know, throughout the fight, but do you think he was able to listen to the uh, the corner's instructions and make those um, improvements in terms of his footwork, his ability to be patient when he was uh, squaring? Um, sorry, sorry, not squaring, but like kind of setting up for the shots. Do you were you were you surprised um, that he showed those world class credentials? Uh, to me, personally, I, I mean, people are saying he's improved and this and that. Two comes up against a fight on oh, good footwork. Decent jab, strong enough to keep him honest, yeah, then, you know, he loses. It's as simple as that. He's up against James the girl. Yeah, I'm not going to take the gloss off, off his victory. If, if, you're not, if you're not fit and you're not on it, he'll beat you. He's there. But yeah. I, I just think yeah. against a good, against a good a boxer, slick boxer, yeah, I think, I think he gets beat, yeah. So uh, let's not start that new bank bandwagon again. 
Um, let's just think about things. Yeah, yeah. You know so I mean? you don't I mean, feel... People are, people are shouting out names, but Billy Joe Saunders and this and that and whatever. Yeah, he, 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 he's a good performance. He won. But I still think he'll get found out against better boxers. Do you know what I mean? He still will get found out, mate. Perfect, perfect. Listen, D, the reception's a bit bad, so we're going to have to make a move, but um, thank you for your support as usual, and we'll speak in a bit. Take care, mate. Cheers, bye. Thanks, Dan. So Take listen, care. guys, we've got um, we've got f- famed fighter, um, took part on the undercard this weekend, um, came back, oh, is it him? Actually, it's not even him. All right, perfect. So I'm going to go out to 012. Your number end, your end, number ends the same as Selby's. Hello? Hi, mate. It's Joe. You're right. How you doing, Joe? You're right. Sorry, mate. Your number ends exactly like Selby. I, yeah, I thought it was Lee Selby. He's on zero one two. <laughs> Seen you on the pants, Joe. You definitely live up to that. <laughs> your move is quite <laughs> quite swift, like him as well. What's on your mind, I'm mate? Ba- Question ba- or statement? Um, nothing really. Well, just just to talk about the weekend. Um, but yeah, one question is: I was thinking about it. When do you guys think um, uh, De Gale last had a convincing win? Yeah, it's a tough one, Joe. I mean. I think the Dur- I think a lot of people kind of you know uh, allude to the uh, Darrell fight and saying that it was his, his most impressive win, but even that one was a, a competitive fight, very close on the scorecards. Yeah, he, uh, he nearly let it get away from him, didn't he? Yeah. I, I think he's I think he's, 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 um, his last convincing win was the uh, the fellow that Virgil Hunter trained on the uh, Frotch Groves two undercard at Wembley. Yeah, can't remember his name. The American he demolished guy, him, yeah. but yeah, for me yeah. that that's the last that's the last time he's he, looked. Um, he He's actually looked convincing, right? you know. Yeah, that's a very yeah, fair point. Yeah, I think he did, mate, about five or six rounds. Yeah, is, it, is it Gonzalez or something like that? Yeah, yeah I, can't yeah, I think you're right, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. since then, he, 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 he's, he's just looked... Um, well, he just he switches off, doesn't he? I think that was inevitable at the weekend. Yeah. I think, to be honest with you, it's a blessing in disguise, really, because if he'd have won that and then looked at fighting somebody like Smith, yeah. Or somebody like that. He'd got completely iced, like big time. Yep, I yeah. agree. He just looks punchy, doesn't he? Like he's not got his feet anymore. Like everything Eubank landed seemed to shake him. This is what I mean. Even though it didn't sort of knock him down, it really kind of it shook him and, and he was able to kind of have an effect on him. You're right. Yeah, I agree, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, it's a shame really, because he's he's been obviously he's been decent with the sport, he's achieved a lot, but um I think to be honest, looking at his career recently, you've got to say he's overachieved. Yeah, perfect. And just a quick question for yourself: Do you think Saturday evening was pay per view worthy in hindsight, and also before? Um, in hindsight, no, and before, no. To be honest with you, I managed to. My mate, my mate, my mate's got one of those dodgy sticks. That's the only reason I watched it. Um, but, we respect uh, the honesty. I wouldn't, exactly. I wouldn't have paid for it. I, th- yeah. I think, I think people like ITV, for example, their, their audience really. Um, isn't boxing fans, but if they put the name Eubank out there, obviously people relate back to his dad. Yeah. Um, I think they just market it well to a point where people think they have to get involved and pay, don't they? But I think um, if you know your boxing like us guys do, then I think realistically, you know, you shouldn't be paying twenty pound for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and if um, do you know what I mean, yeah. And Joe, if um, Eubank was to step back down to middleweight, I mean, who would you like to see him mix it with? I know the a lot of the middleweights now they're tied up with the DAZN platform. Um, and there's not really anywhere else, kind of, you've got the likes of Lemieux with uh, Golden Boy. But who would you uh, personally like to see uh, Eubank fight? Um, I'd tell you what, it wouldn't be a bad fight. And it would be, um, he'd get a little bit of a bauble for it. It's, uh, Rob Brand, that would be a good fight for him. Mm. And he could probably win it as well. Yeah, the WBA. He could probably beat Rob Brand. No. Yeah, and that, that puts him in a, in a good position then, doesn't it, if he wins that? Precisely, precisely yeah. as well. Same with the Duel. So, um... What means more, that or the IBO? <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. he's won it twice mate <laughs> and would yeah, you like to see him stay at the weight or move back down uh, I don't think he's big enough to compete with, with the proper super middleweights I mean Groves dwarfed him yeah. and look what Callum yeah. Smith did to Groves he, exactly. he dwarfed Groves I, I think he belongs at middleweight really, but I think because he can make um, super middleweight sort of for the right opponent I think he's, he's in a quite healthy position really yeah. Um, but I think he's natural weight. And he's always looked a bit better at middleweight, I think, as well. It's a much more saturated division. And also, you're probably inclined to think that outside of Billy Joe Saunders and Callum Smith, are there any fights at super middleweight that you're desperate to see Eubank have? No. Um, probably not. No, n- not really, if I'm honest. Yeah. I think it's one of those divisions, like you say, it's saturated. It's not the best 
not the best division. But there's also there's risk because he's going to be small, and there's not going to be high reward. Because I mean, you look at the champions like yeah. who is it's Caleb Plant, Dere- uh, the other Darrell brother, yeah. um, big punches, and they're well. just not worth. They're not yeah, but they're not worth the risk, are they? I mean, Caleb Plant is potentially a tough fight for him because he's a proper super middleweight. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and. Um, yeah, it could be a banana skin for him that like take a risk to try and to try and get another belt, um, but the the reward isn't really there for him. Yeah, no, totally agree. So, um, listen, Joe, thank you very much for your call, mate. Um, appreciate your yeah. time and support. Can I, can I just ask one thing? Yeah, Sorry, no, I want to course. see what you think of something. I heard something on another podcast recently, and they were saying um, that with De Gale, he's never really been a technically brilliant fighter. I know he's obviously Olympian and all that, but he's never been technically brilliant. And what his strength always was was his sort of attributes, so like his um, athleticism and his agility and all that yeah. kind of thing. Yep. And they certainly reckon that they're the first things to go, aren't they? Yeah. Um, you know, as, a, as, an, as an athlete in any, in any sport. Mm-hmm. And because they're the first things that go, that's why he looks so shot sort of so soon, if that makes sense. It's not like he's still got um, a decent, he's not like he's always had a decent chin or a good punch or anything like that. It's always been based on his athleticism. And as he's got older and been in tough fights and stuff, that, that kind of thing has been taken away from him. Yeah, yeah, it's true, and I think as well the fact that he doesn't live the life he's, you know, he, he we see him like he he, he likes a he likes a party. I mean, yeah. do you feel that kind of uh, played detriment on him, especially after the Badu Jack fight, where a lot of people feel that he's he was he stayed shot um, after that fight? Do you think kind of the fact that he hasn't, especially when you you kind of you go on you you get yeah. older, um, that he didn't kind of live the yeah, the, no, live you the make life. A good, yeah you make a good point. Yeah. It's uh, it's strange, isn't it? Because I think probably when people are a bit younger. Um, and in the prime and stuff, they can maybe get away with it a little bit. I wouldn't say not living the life at all, but they could probably get away with it here and there. Yeah. But the Gale seems to do it between every fight, and like he's been on the slide for a couple of years now. So I mean, exactly, it's, um, it can't be good for his body at this stage of his career. Whereas I think maybe somebody a bit younger and fresh, it might be able to get away with it to a certain extent. Yeah. Definitely. So, John, listen, thank so, you very yeah. much for calling in. We just got yeah. to quickly move on. Uh, we've got two calls right, that we need to get nice to. Cheers, thanks. Cheers. Cheers, thanks. Bye bye. Cheers for calling in. Cheers, thanks. Going out to 036 now. <laughs> Hi there. Sorry, we've got a uh, 036. Hi, who's calling? Hi, Dennis Mohammed. How you doing, Mohammed? You all right? Yeah, good lads. I haven't spoken to you boys for a few months. Been listening to your show ages ago, but was out of the country for a bit. But really happy for you guys, what you guys are doing. And, we appreciate uh, that, Mohammed. Following the support, podcast man. online and stuff like that. So, yeah, good work, boys. We appreciate that. We appreciate, appreciate that. that. Very Question much. or statement? Um. Two quick ones. Statement, I think um, the Gale basically showed that he's deteriorated like significantly. And I think Eubank showed a glimpse of his class again. But I think always shows too much of a gl- like, little bit of a glimpse. I think he's got so much to offer. And he's got so much in his repertoire. I just really don't think he'll ever fulfill his potential due to the arrogance that he has within him and because of his father. And I know his father said that he wouldn't be in the limelight, but again, when his son was there, off he popped in again. So I think there's so much attributes that Eubank has, speed, power, and like yeah. punch ferocity yeah. and stuff like that. I just wish that he really just buckles up and actually shows us what he has, because yeah. I think he beats Billy Joe Saunders comfortably okay. if he actually goes in there yeah. and yeah. actually boxes properly, because the first one, he didn't give a shit in the first couple, by my language, in the first couple of no, rounds, but... <laughs> That really frustrates me to watch a fighter who's got so many attributes and doesn't really utilise them. Of course. Yeah. Um, I mean, it definitely, I think that's a big fight that could be sold as well. So, um, yeah, definitely. Definitely, thanks. I mean, and, this, yep, carry on, man. Sorry. Go on, and then, yeah, go on, carry on. Sorry, interrupted no, you. No, 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 sorry. Just uh, last question. Oh, yeah, the question is, um, what do you think about Khan? And what do you think of his chances? I mean, it's a, it's a t- it's going to be a very tough fight. Um Obviously, Crawford were pound for pound, were arguably the best in the world, and I think just kind of the fact that um, you know Khan has got the he's got the speed, he's got the um, you know the range and the kind of uh, the the punch volume, but I just think Crawford overall in kind of the all the departments is is a lot superior. That's just just my opinion, but I think Crawford is a, is a much better technical fighter. Um, he's a lot more compact than Khan. And I just think in terms of his angles, his um, his movement, I just think he's going to be on top of Khan. And uh, I can see it kind of ending early to middle rounds, to be honest. Do you think like this is a first time that we'll see Amir Khan get a boxing lesson or do you think he's going to get knocked out? 
well, I think it would be hasty to suggest it goes that far in light of his uh, last performance. But um, in the step up in levels, there is obviously a massive risk of uh, um, getting knocked out by Crawford. But if he is to go the 12 rounds, I think it's inevitable, Mohammed. If he is to go the 12 rounds, yeah. it's very unlikely that he'll be the aggressor. He'll be on the receiving end of a lot of punishment and his chin would have withstood a hell of a lot to have taken it that far. So listen, Mohammed. Appreciate you calling in. Listen, please keep uh, supporting and calling next week, uh, especially when there's any uh, big fights. Um, but we're going to have to move on to the next caller because we've got Lee Selby in the queue. Cheers, so boys. Thank Thanks you for, your for the support, kind mate. words, Mohammed. Thank, thank you. you very much. Appreciate that. Seven eight eight seven eight eight. The floor is yours. And yes, you're you're all right. Wrapped on TV. How you doing? What's your name? Yes, just finished training. <clears throat> just finished training. Nice. Uh, heard, heard you were on. So. Uh, yeah, first time caller. Oh, Connor Daly. Super. Thank you very yeah, much. What's your out, name? Uh, Connor Daly. Connor Daly. Oh, yes, Connor. How, How you doing? doing? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, shout out to Thomas. Perfect. Uh, yeah, Question or statement? A couple of weeks and uh, um, a bit of both. Um, firstly, do you see, uh, I heard, uh, I think Shane McGuigan said uh, that new bank that turned up on Saturday, yeah. he still would have had a chance to be uh, growth. Yeah. What, what do you think of that? I think in terms Obviously, of... Obviously, it might have been a, might have been a closer fight, but... Yeah. yeah. No, no, it's a great point. I mean, um, I heard a lot of uh, rumours about... Um, Eubank Senior asking uh, McGuigan to train, uh, train Junior, but I think in terms of um, the adjustments he made on uh, Saturday, I think it would have been a lot more competitive uh, fight against Groves. I just think in terms of Groves' jab, his power, his ability to keep... Um, someone of a smaller frame off. I just think Groves would have been too imposing on the night. Um, obviously, being a fully fledged super middleweight as well, I think that would have paid a, a massive factor um, in terms of that. So, but no, no, it's a great, great point to raise. And Connor, we're going to get a yeah. statement I from you because we've got thing. we've got we've got Lee Selby on the line, so yeah. we need to get to him. So, if we can get a statement from you, and I really yeah, appreciate. Last, last one. Yeah. I think I think if if you bank fights uh, Smith, you'll get knocked out within six rounds. If he fights. Clan, he'll get out box and to lose on point. Um, and that's it, yeah. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, yeah, love it. Thank love you very Connor. much. Listen, appreciate you guys right. supporting. Uh, please be sure to keep calling in. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, Connor. Appreciate it. Right, Cheers. Thanks, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So moving out now to uh, Lee Selby, who just fought on this weekend's card, um, came in with a tough, rugged performance against Omar Douglas, uh, somebody who's known to be a pressure fighter, Heavy hitter um, and is very active. So moving on, and we're welcome to uh, have Lee Selby on the show this evening. Hi, Lee. All right, guys. How you doing? You well? How's it going, Lee? Nice to have you I'm back good. on the platform. Good. How are you good, feeling thank after you. after such a I'll say tough performance, but um, it's definitely a dogged performance from yourself. How are you feeling? And how how do you look back on that fight? Yeah, I, 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 I'm feeling good. You know, um, my, my eyes are the best saw as, as can be of expected. Course. Yeah. So I got caught, caught with a head. I think <laughs> I got three little cuts over my eyes. But um, yeah, but, but now I'm all good. Good. Um, Lee, cuts seem to have been a recurring theme for you as of late. Um, yeah. In light of the Warrington fight and Saturday evening, of course, yeah. does it frustrate you that the cuts seem to overshadow the boxing performance itself? Oh, it's, it's, it's very frustrating. You know, um, yeah. in the second round of Saturday night, I thought, oh, not again. I got caught with the head. The blood started running in my eyes. Like, in, in close, all, all I could do I, all I could do was hold. Like, I couldn't see a thing. Like, yeah. just to cut you on the side of my eyes. Yeah. Like, it, it only takes like, one speck of, speck of blood to get in your eye and cover your pupil. You, you can't see a thing. Mm, shout out to your cut, man, right? But so you've got to just, you've got to stay professional and just get on with the job. Yeah, yeah, well said. Uh, definitely, well and said. obviously with the uh, the expertise in the corner and around your team, obviously the likes of Chris Sanagar, Tony Borg. Yeah. Um, in terms of stemming the bleeding um, and sort of has, as the the fight progressed into the championship rounds, um, what sort of advice yeah. was the corner giving you? Uh, was it sort of just uh, remain calm, stick to the game plan, and uh, how much do you That's think? Just, just, yeah, just just the box, just get beyond my boxing. You know, when, when I'm boxing, flu on, I'm, I'm I'm hard to beat. But when, when, when in close, you know, I'm tall, I'm, I'm dangly, like especially for featherweight, and I got long arms, so I'm not really an inside fighter. Yeah. You know, I'm tough enough to, to like mix it in the inside, but like my body frame and shape just it just don't work as well for me. So when when I'm in close to these shorter guys with the, with the smaller arms, smaller reach, they, they like they sort of 
it's not like I work me, but they're more effective inside than they are the long range of it. Yeah. Mm. And and I highly um obviously um Omar, you you faced um or you chose to fight Omar Douglas, a guy who came in, good reputation, yeah. only lost two, um, yeah. you know, fought the likes of Ave Fortuna, um, high press of fighter, yeah. um, good strength. How did the conversation come about to go up to lightweight as a division period and um I mean and how I guess from training, you know, from your diet, nutrition, yeah. how easy was it to make the weight? Well, it, it, well, it was far from easy. You know, I, I struggled re- really, really bad to, to make featherweight mm-hmm. for my last. But since I won the title, it was a struggle when I won the title, but it, it just got more difficult yeah. uh, ever since. And I, I don't think the, the four pounds would have benefited me benefited me enough. Mm-hmm. So I, I just jumped up to, to lightweight. It's, it's more of a natural weight. Yep. But it, it's not like a case that had not extra nine pounds to pack on. It's an extra nine pounds that I have to take off. Yeah. You, know, you see me on, on the way, and there's no, no fat on me, and I'm still Yeah. Yeah. And uh, on the topic it's, of weight. It's, it's, still, it's still difficult to me. It's not, it's not straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, dare I say it, Lee, you still look quite big at the weight, even having moved up. In the corner That's of it. your eye. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm bigger than most lightweight. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. a big guy. It's surprising when when you when you're next to me how how big I will you. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in the corner of your eye, have you got a potential leap to super lightweight in the in your sights in the outer periphery? What what super? They they change all the names. And what's that light welterweight? Is it? Yeah, <laughs> light welterweight, super lightweight. Yeah. Yeah, well, ten, ten stone. I'd be a lot more comfortable. Yeah. And again, a ten stone is, is not an ounce of fat of it. Yeah. Like, yeah, of course. Uh, to be honest. Hand on my heart, I will, I will fight anybody. <laughs> to, to be honest, I don't care what weight it is. Yeah, I'm like that. one of those fighters. I think most fighters are the same. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're like the type of people we will fight against the best. Yeah. That's how you're going to be. Fantastic. And uh, Lee, just obviously looking at the, the domestic picture, uh, stretching from obviously £130 yeah. right through to, as Rafi touched on there, like welterweight. I mean, is it for you now to yeah. kind of have the biggest fights on the biggest platforms out there? Or, or is it kind of target those domestic uh, names? And if a title presents itself, then obviously snatch at the opportunity. To be honest, I'm, I'm happy to, to fight anybody, like I said. So I just leave that with, with more management. But... Ideally, I just want to be in the, the biggest and the, the best fights out there. You know, I'm, I'm 32 now. I've, I've, I've won everything. Saturday night, I won my ninth, my ninth championship belt. So I've won like yeah. the Welsh, Celtic, British, Commonwealth, European, two WC international titles, IBF international title, world title. So I've, I've won all the belts. Yeah. But yeah. now I just want to be involved in, in, in the biggest fights possible. And when you look at the, the division, especially the, the lightweight, obviously Lomachenko is in there. Yeah. He's fighting a, a Krola. Yeah. Um, you've got Garcia who's fighting Spence and obviously you've got the recently IBF yeah. belt which is won by Richard Comey. I guess who out of those yeah. would be the most interesting for you, number one? And and do you have, um, do you see yourself fighting for a title in the next two, maximum three fights? Well, I, I'd like to fight for a title within within two fights, yes. Yeah. But but again, like if a big domestic fight or a, or a, a big fight with a big name opponent come up, like the titles are like sort of irrelevant and uh, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. But I'm, 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 I'm happy to fight whoever. And I mean, obviously, last because this this weekend you fought on the ITV box office platform. Um, I mean, yeah. how key can that be to your career working with the likes of PBC and the ITV box office be- to become a household name? Um, is that something that you're focused well, on, you and your team as well, or looking at? Well, that, that, that's that's the, the biggest platform in the UK. I'd imagine I, ITV. Yeah. You know, we got like it's like terrestrial TV and and the pay per view um, platform. Yeah. So Al Heyman has just done like a two-year deal. I think it might be 15 shows a year yeah. for, the, for the next two years. So so there's um, a lot of opportunity for, for me to be to be boxing on, on, on those shows. Yeah. yeah and um, yeah, if, if, if I can do that, I can you know, get, get my name right out there. And not, not just to like the sports fans, the boxing fans, but like to the, to the general public who watch, who watch our TV. Of course, and uh, broadcasting platforms aside, Ali, now that you've moved up in weight, does that for you close yeah. the curtain on the Josh Warrington chapter, or is that a wrong that you'd look to put right further down the line, or is that history for you now? Well, it's history to me, but of course, um, if you moved up in weight and fancy the fire, I'm, I'm, I'm game for anybody. That's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, that, that would definitely be very yeah. interesting. Yeah. And a, and a reporter um, interviewed me at um, but just as I was going to the to the to the venue for my last fight, 
Yeah. And and he, he said um Josh Warrington said he would like to fight me in a catch weight or something. So I so more for, more than um up for that. Oh wow, yeah. that'd be really interesting. And yeah. I can imagine yeah. you'd probably be inclined towards that as well. If yeah. he did say that, it, uh, if he said that yeah. 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 And uh Liam now is... they might have just been the reporter trying to trying to stir some shit, trying to <laughs> get a story. Yeah, uh, Lee, it was great to have uh, see you back on the uh, under the bright lights on uh, Saturday. Um, yeah, uh, just thank a, you. just a kind of a, a question about sort of remaining active this year. Um, how many fights would you yeah. kind of like to uh, have? I know it's kind of you know you, you've alluded to you know ha- another chapter in your career. You want to push on now, get yeah. the biggest fights out there possible. So I mean, if you could map out three fights, whether that be on the domestic scene or title contention, uh, yeah. who would you kind of like to fight? Well, it's a bit frustrating with with these cuts. You know, I'm going to have to take a little bit of time out to to let the cuts here. Otherwise, I, I would have been planning my next fight straight away. Yeah. But mm. um, you know, I, I'm just just happy just to be fine. I'll, I'll fight anybody. Like I said, there's no one I I target. I, I know the IBF. Well, it'd be interesting to see the IBF ratings after winning an international title. You know, I was IBF champion for for a long time. Mm-hmm. Lost the belt on my fifth defense, and I was IBF Fighter of the Year. So I, I'm, I'm assuming they'll, they'll rank me really highly in, in the lightweight division. So um, we, we just see now next month with the coming the ratings. Yeah, because the in the IBF the vacant those are number one and number two positions essentially are vacant. Now. Yeah, they, they leave them, they leave them up another. Exactly. Yeah. So that that could be really be good. See they put me. Yeah, and there's a lot of and I say I say dangerous guys, but when you look in the IBF as a division, there really is some. You know, right in the rankings, there's some dangerous guys, which would be some entertaining yeah. fights. Devin Haney, Teofoma yeah. Lopez, who fought a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Rancis Bartholomew, so like really them, good. I want to be involved in, I want to be involved in these, big, these big fights. Yeah, and especially with your skill set. <laughs> for the fans, that, I want to see you. That's why I'm in the game for. I don't want to be like... And that, that's another reason why, why my, my team picked out a, a dangerous fighter last summer, so just, just to, to, to get me moved up in the ratings quickly. Yeah. I, I could have come back and, and like, Knocked out like an easy opponent. Look, no. look, look a million dollars. Yeah, but it don't get it don't move you up through the ratings. Yeah. No, and that's testament to obviously your world championship credentials. And I think as well, um, the yeah. fact that you you feel a lot more happier, comfortable at uh, lightweight will obviously yeah. stand you in good stead and give you the the strength and the confidence to to I mean get well, right I, back I was, in the I mix. was able to. Be, I was able. To... Yeah, I was able to eat breakfast the day before the win. <laughs> so the yeah, well, and I mean, but you, you, in all, all all jokes aside, when you look at it, though, you know, a lot of people would have thought Lee Selby after the Warrington loss, jumping up two weights, is he mad? What's he doing that for? But, you know, you were able to yeah. execute a game plan. Um, and again, Douglas, yeah. I've seen some of his knockouts. I didn't see a lot of him before, but he was a dangerous fighter and you had the cuts, but you remained under pressure. You were able to stick to your game plan. Yeah. And as much as he was coming forward, really, I think you had the point, the, the score, the beating of him. Um, and I think for me, with, the with points the were cuts, a bit too close, to be fair. I think it would have been a lot, a lot wider without, without the cuts. I could have, yeah. I could have boxed more. I could have set it down a lot more. Yeah. And yeah. like like you said, he, he was a dangerous fighter just because like, the UK fans all know him. Yeah. In, in, in America, he, he's a good fighter. He had those two losses, one against Ed Cherry, yeah. who yeah, had a close right. fight with Jose Jirazi, so he could have been the world champion. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, Javier Fortuna who was a world champion. Exactly. So if, if I was still if I was still a, a title holder and I boxed him, that would have been like considered like a tough tough world title defence. Definitely. And as you... Fight, no, sorry, go on. Yeah, go on. Oh, sorry, um, as you touched on about the margins, do you feel that obviously the cuts have tainted the um, light shed on your recent performances? What going forward do you think I, I, can be done? Sure. Like, what do you think can well, be done? Because this is a recurring thing now. The cuts? Yeah, as in cu- the cuts? yeah, bit like, more bobbing and weaving. Need to be a, a, a bit, yeah, not get in. <laughs> yeah, just with the edge. I, I just need to be a, a bit more disciplined. As soon, as soon as the fight is in close, just turn them and just back to the boxing. Keep it a long range. Yeah. Don't don't get mixed up because because I'm I'm quite tall for the well I'm quite tall for a lightweight. And when they, when they're coming in low with their head, I'm I'm above them. I'm coming yeah. down there, coming up, and I'm just just cracking heads. So I'm just gonna have to keep turning them on the ropes. Of keep course. It a long range, long range boxing. And Lee, I guess also there's an element of fighters studying you in the same way that you'll study them. They'll now pick up yeah. on this recurring theme and possibly target. Well, not target because yeah. you can't target cuts, but um, lean towards situations, pun intended, that could instigate that with headbutts. So, um, what do you feel that 
now that's become more prominent and that could be used as sort of a tactical thing against you specifically will you adjust to, will you adjust for that well i suppose it, it could be used against me like i said in those in those clinches if they're coming in with with their head low they, they know if they catch me with the head i'm more and more likely gonna gonna cut so like i said it's got to be disciplined in close and just just don't just keep the head away from them of just course. keep turning on them and uh, Lee, thank you. Appreciate you calling in. Um, just a couple of things before. Oh, no you... Sorry, Cameron. Yeah, and yeah, I was going to no say. Y- you. Yeah, yeah. No, I was just going to say uh, two things uh, before we let you go. Firstly, um, will you be travelling yeah. to Mexico with your brother for that fight that he's got um, at all? <laughs> and I believe um, that's I in have, a month. I won't be. Okay, no way. Sadly, but... I won't be. No. Wish him all the best, best for us. Luck, I know it's a uh, t- tough, tough, yeah. tough ask, but you know we know that he's got the skill set to do it. And also, if I'm right, yeah. I saw on Instagram, it's, it's your daughter's birthday, so happy birthday to her. And I hope you guys can yeah, uh, enjoy it, enjoy a nice thank evening. Um, Lee, before we let you go, do you yeah, want to just shout you. out your social media yeah. and Twitter or whatever social media handles you have? Yeah, you can follow me on all, all, all the all the social media platforms at Lee Selby one two six. At Lee Selby, Selby one two six. I, I should be I should be changing it to one three five. So look out for the one three five guys. <laughs> Listen, Lee, yeah. thank you very much. Uh, all the best and look forward yeah, to speaking to you in the future. And Cheers. Congratulations. Congratulations. Night. Exactly. And Congrats. best of luck to your brother. That's Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, thanks. Cheers. That's Lee Selby. Um, I see we've got a caller on, so we don't want to make you. Uh, we don't want to lose your comment. Uh, we we show love to all fans out here. So nine one zero. Nine one zero. The floor is yours. Uh, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Raps on TV. Yes. Raps on TV. Yes. How's, How's it going? going? How's it going, Coach Wall? Yes, I'm good. Who's calling? It's Sam. Oh yes, Sam from London. What's going on, Sam? We're here with the guys in the studio. Not so good. Much, man. How you doing, Sam? Yeah, I'm all good, man. Just chilling. Just finished the workout and have to jump on Raps on TV to say my piece, have my say, you know? Yeah. So Just everybody's in time. Going to the gym. Just everybody's in time. going on a week at, at going to the gym. It must be that sunshine. You know what that sunshine does? Everyone just jumps in the gym, get a few reps. The sun's out, guns out. Exactly. Get your body's right, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> mate, you need to be sparring. Um, what's question or statement, mate? Hello? Pardon? He asked a question or Hello? statement. Can you hear us? Uh, yeah. Question. Okay. Go for it. Yeah, Go for far it. away. I've got a question. What do you What do you feel the biggest fights have to... What, what fights do you feel are important this year, 2019, for the culture? That's, good. That's a good question, good question. Uh, Sam. Yeah, I mean, we haven't covered that yet, but um, I think... I mean, everyone's looking at the heavyweight landscape and wants to see... Uh, I know it's a long it's a long way off, but the the Joshuas uh, against the Wilders, Furies, that kind of triangle of heavyweights at the top of the elite. Um, but in terms of a fight that I mean I'd particularly like to see um, this year would be uh, Billy Joe Saunders at middleweight against one of the the champions, uh, whether it be an Andrade or. Um, uh, yeah, a Jacobs. Yeah. I mean, I think it's 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 proven a lot more difficult nowadays with all these kind of um, platforms, uh, fighters that are not necessarily tied up with uh, the American platforms, the networks that are out there. So, I mean, I hope that the the promoters can come to some sort of consensus that there this shouldn't be a barrier. This uh, TV network uh, platform situation shouldn't be. Um, a barrier for these fights to happen and there is a lot of good fights out there you've got Lomachenko Garcia um, so yeah like, um, no, of course yeah so I mean yeah like there's there's massive fights to be made out there and they're no just... 100% 100% um, wanted to also catch up with you guys on what you make of the old the girl you bank review what, 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 what's what your, do you think what, of it what was, what's your thoughts on the girl you bank yeah. What's okay. your thoughts on the DLU thoughts bank? Was, you know, literally, I thought it would be a really, really good, tight fight. Yeah. Um, initially, on paper, it looks like it would be a really tight fight. You've got two light-skinned brothers that both don't have to talk. Both had two losses. Both, both lost to similar sort of people. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's an all-or-nothing fight. One either goes up in the rankings or one either retires. And, you know, I thought that Eubank would generally win, but I also thought the girl has that bit of because he has, he's been to the top level and yeah. he's a very cocky guy and he likes to back up what he says. I thought yeah, he yeah. could potentially give you guys a lot of trouble in terms of his levels. Like he was talking about skills and what it takes not to knock him out. And to be honest, to be fair to him, even though he did get bullied and battered, 
um, he did show levels by not getting knocked out because of how awkward he was and you know, his movement. That was the only thing that kind of faced him. The yeah. old kind of the old school awkward moving, switching up from orthodox to stuff. Or yeah. it's been an awkward, awkward fighter for Eubank, who's never really dealt with someone like that before. Mm. But ultimately, Eubank proved uh, to be too good, to be too strong, yeah. to be too powerful for him. But this is just the beginning for him, and I'm really happy that he's decided to come down a notch. Um, leave his dad. I feel that personally he's left his dad mm-hmm. and he's told his dad specifically to not be involved in his career. Whether he's done it in a public way, he hasn't, but I think behind closed doors he said, look, I'm taking control of my career, dad, and I don't want you involved in it. Yeah. Um, and it's working well. Look at the guy, Nate. I think Nate's quite good in terms of what he says. Um, I think he still has the kind of style which Eubank was looking for uh, mm-hmm. as a trainer because he was training with Senior and Nate trained at the Mayweather Club and had the same has the same kind of style with senior. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really, look, I'm really looking forward to what the future holds for, for Eubank because I think he might even pick up WCB, WBC belt, especially mm. with the Darrell and, um, who is it? Darrell, who else? Yield, who else? Yield, Darrell that, and Yildrim. Yeah, Darrell Yeah, Yildrim, exactly. Especially, yeah. I, I think Chris Eubank could pick up a belt, a, a, a legitimate belt. I'm not saying the IBO type is not legitimate, yeah. but it's more well respected amongst the governing bodies, amongst mm. the fighting community. Yeah. Um, I do feel Sky's the limit for this boy now because he cut off the one thing that was stopping him, yeah. which is his dad. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think? Do you agree? Um, I think internally it's very difficult to answer because obviously the the, um, dem- the demography within that camp is obviously behind closed doors. Um, I'm yeah. not even tempted to say I'm inclined to agree because it really is so open-ended and um, yeah. yeah, subjective, but it seems like this fight, with regards to DeGale specifically, left quite a sour taste in your mouth. Where do you see James yeah. DeGale going from here? Because it seems as though you were quite underwhelmed oh, from his side. Oh, DeGale's finished, man. I can't lie. DeGale's finished. His head's gone. That's it? You, you wouldn't even want to see... I think his head's gone. I think, he's... I think he needs to put where he's ahead because his head has actually gone. If you see the way he interviews and speaks, he can't articulate. The man can't articulate a sentence. The speech is slow. Generally, he yeah. struggles to articulate. I'm, I, I'm not being... You know, even George Rose made that comment with IFL or on IFL when he said, "Look, the girl's lost his head. He can't even speak. Look at he was. He doesn't even know how to articulate certain things or say certain things." He, yeah. yeah. You know, he, 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 the boxing's taken its toll, and he hasn't been the same since the Jack fight. And for me, it's a bit of a sensitive topic because I don't want to see someone like the girl lose their head, and yeah. and the sport the sport has to force him to quit rather than him opting to quit. You know. Yeah. Um, I think we should just retire with his held head held high and to keep it moving from there but I I do think he should it's a very very bad decision if he decides to get back in to fighting again I think Eubank was his last biggest payday with the PBC Al Heyman guy I'm sure Al Heyman made sure he got a nice lion's share of those two fighting (laughs) yeah tire and do what he needs to do and he bangs on about how much he's um, he's made money and he's secured his future well focus on your future then yeah. The boxing's clearly behind you the way you fought, not even in a rude way or just attacking him, but from a standpoint, that's that's how I feel. Yeah, and um, I think he's definitely yeah. achieved like everything possible in the sport. I mean, you kind of look back and you see his pedigree, um, his resume, you know, two time world champion. You're a gold medalist, exactly. You're a gold medalist, like just, just leave it at that. You're a gold medalist, you beat Jack, not beat Jack, it was, it was a draw. If you didn't get knocked out, if you didn't get dropped in the second, in the 12th round, he would have actually probably just nicked that fight with the way the judges were scoring it. But, yeah. um, you know, he drew, which is really respectable. Yeah. And he's retained, he, he won back his belt from Chuax. He lost to Eubank. It's done. Yeah. yeah. Finished. In the words of the Seam Hamid. <laughs> yeah. And, um, it's done. Retire. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, like uh, t- just quickly touching on the uh, the AJ uh, Miller press conference this week. Uh, what was your thoughts on the the two? I mean, two contrasting press conferences. Obviously, okay. the uh, the conference in New York. The first one was like, the first one I really enjoyed. Um, yeah. Just the fact that Miller was able to press AJ's buttons and push him, I was like, yes, that's the AJ I want to see. Yeah. I want to see him talking smack. I want to see him not being saying. Um, politically incorrect things. That's why I like AJ because he can he can do both. Mm. He can he can surround himself in both environments where he can be with the corporates and he can mix it with the fighters and the rough of the rough. And I think recently I, I feel that he 
needed that kind of press conference to kind of say who he is and remind people what he's about because I think people are getting people are getting lost in the amount of ads with British Airways and Lucas Aid and all these <laughs> other sponsors that people are forgetting he's a real fighter like yeah. Miller was saying he does his skin and all that wants to see that you're a fighter we want to know the core reason why you're here and what you're about and what you're here to do um, don't get me wrong I'm, I'm back in AJ but I also feel that Miller will give him a bit of work but I thought that's a perfect yeah. Uh, this is the perfect opponent for AJ to announce himself mm-hmm. to the American crowd, especially in MSG um, with Miller. I feel that he will. <clears throat> I feel that AJ will just show levels and really solidify himself and begin to grow his brand in America. And I'm interested to see that journey. Bringing it back to the UK um, presser, I like that one as well because AJ was back to his normal self, back yeah. to his calm territory. But he was also giving him a bit of stick, and he's going to rearrange his face. Like, I love that fight. Too. I want to hear that. And Miller, Miller wasn't piping up as much before because he realised that, oh, shit, I'm not in my backyard. Yeah. I'm, not in, I'm not in New York. I can't be saying some of the stuff that I was saying in America because I'm here for a few days. Exactly. Do you get what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, I thought that Miller, Miller's been very tactical. I think he knows this is going to be one of his biggest paydays he's ever going to get. So he's just trying to soak it up and just really take things in and take in the UK scene. I get he's been to the UK before, but it's one thing going to the UK and watching a fight and there's another thing actually being in that ring um, or being around AJ or being around the whole team well AJ said. fans and the whole yeah. clout that he actually has with him um, yeah. I know he's fighting MSG but I do feel I, I just feel that AJ is going to be so clinical in this performance because he feels like he's got doubters on his back he's got people saying he took the easy option out when he didn't yeah. so it's listen, just down to politics and promoters so this is Tom thank you very much for the call uh, appreciate all the support as you, always just going to have to cut, cut you there um, but listen keep calling keep supporting we, we really appreciate all the opinions from all the fans um, that are joining the sport so enjoy your week no problem thanks very much thank you very much cheers appreciate later. that cheers later. Top, later. Man. top man cheers uh, no it's good good set of callers uh, today so yeah definitely like to hear their opinions obviously it was a busy weekend um, also just to let you know breaking news while we've been on the air uh, the WBC have confirmed that Wilder versus Fury number two will not be taking place I repeat wow. will not be taking place um, it's rumoured that as we would have thought Fury is going to explore other options namely the ESPN deal um, and who knows when we'll get that fight hopefully if we don't get Fury versus Wilder, we should get Joshua versus Wilder, maybe September or December. But that's it, guys, from that point of view. I just yeah. wanted to quickly get you a quick, 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 quick response. Thoughts on that announcement? Yeah, to be honest, I'm, I'm quite happy to see Fury, um, you know, divert because I don't think he should put all his eggs into into one basket. Everyone knows that he won the fight um, mm. in December unofficially. Yes. But um, I don't think he needs to, um, you know, I think Wilder needs Fury a lot more than Fury needs Wilder. Besides the, the belt... I think Fury's got a lot of options out there. He's obviously back, coming after an eighteen-month layoff. He's had three fights since then, two kind of uh, tick-over fights, and then obviously the one meaningful fight at elite level. So I think that you look at the the rest of the landscape at heavyweight, and there is fights there for him to yeah. you know build a bit of confidence back, get yeah. some more. Well, he rounds. definitely doesn't need confidence, but I agree with you. Build more, get more rounds, work on his fitness and his stamina. Yeah. yeah. The political chess continues. Um, yeah. It's a shame for me because I'd have wanted to see that yeah. sooner rather than later. But maybe Fury and Wilder collectively now know that they can only for so long have a stranglehold over the current attention or the flame that's going in the heavyweight division. So mm. maybe delaying it is just to wind Joshua up a little bit more. Yeah, I think from a commercial perspective, it's definitely a smart move because the demand for this fight is clearly going to grow after the first one. Now that Fury signed with um, ESPN. So for me, I think Aram's not stupid. He's smart and he could say, well, actually, what's the difference between now and September or December? So let Fury probably get out, do a card, you know, in, I don't know, LA or New York, wherever, make a bit of money, make him a bit of a household name in the States because ESPN is a huge platform. And then when the time is, well, I say right because the time is right now, but from their perspective, they'll say, you know, give it a year and we'll fight Wilder. And I wouldn't be surprised if that was to happen, to be fair. So... Yeah. yeah, it is a shame. Like you said, it's the political guess, chess move. But you know what? I think there's big fights to be made. Joshua fighting Miller. After that, you know, Joshua's also got the advantage now to go to Wilder and say, actually, here's an offer. Let's make this fight happen. And we'll make this fight happen in the States. So, yeah, really looking forward to see what comes comes up next. So, guys, listen, thank you very much for all the callers. 
all the listeners as per usual uh, tuning in thank you for Lee Selby for being a guest on the show today guys don't forget if you want to find us on YouTube it's Raps on TV make sure you subscribe if you want to find us on Instagram it's Raps on TV and make sure you follow our digital platform as well uh, on YouTube and just share the support um, uh, keep uh, keep the uh, ball rolling and uh, appreciate all the support as always all the callers giving us their thoughts and appreciate the kind words, uh, Mohammed and a few others tonight. Some really uh, kind, sentimental messages, and we do take those on board. So thank you very much. Yeah, we appreciate it. We're going to keep doing what we're doing, hopefully with bigger guests, bigger names, and bigger news. So guys, listen, we're going to be rolling out now, but until next week, have a good one. Adios. Adios. Adios.